listening at 6.30 p.m. on May 14, 2024. We're going to open up the Adley Conservation Commission meeting. First on the agenda is a notice of intent 170-297. 315 Russell Street has been continued from the last meeting. Police and SLS seeks to reconstruct a Subaru dealership building and parking area. Work will take place within the riverfront area and 100-foot buffer zone. And I understand we're going to be continuing that tonight? Correct. Okay. So I'll look for a motion to continue this to Tuesday, June 11th at 6.30 p.m. I'll make that motion. Brandon Second. makes motion. Second. Keep seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All three of us, Steve, Brandon, and Jerry. Okay. Thank you. Next is the request for certificate of compliance, 170-203 and 170-259. First one's 315 Russell Street. Second one's 303 Russell Street. These are both connected to the redevelopment of the Valise SLS site in the Subaru dealership. Correct. Okay. The first one being, I would say, is the first one 203? Is that Barry Roberts? Uh, that's yeah, probably 303 was Barry Roberts, 315 was uh, Steve Lewis. Three, okay, so 203 was Steve Lewis. So, 170-203 is for 315 Russell Street. Which is Correct. Steve Lewis. Well, Steve Lewis, so it's four. So let's tackle that one first, okay? Yeah, so that was one uh, forest construction that had done the work there. I think there was um, an engineer as built plan, and then we also have a letter from Jeff Casey from uh, now Belize was the forest at the time, signing off on that everything was done in accordance with those plans. Hey, that, that, is that one fine, Kayla? Is that the, yeah, we have the one. That was the other one? That, the, yeah. Second one? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. basically... Everything's been submitted properly, which you've seen. So I look for a motion to approve the certificate of compliance for 170-203 at 315 Russell Street. Have a motion? I'll make a motion. Brandon, make a motion. Yeah. Second? Second. Steve, any further discussion? Kayla, everybody? Fine. Good. All those in favor, aye. aye. All three unanimous, none opposed. Uh, do we have to sign something for that, Caleb? Yeah. I'll send that around now. It's the next one that we got a couple issues for that. Small issues. That was two and three. Yeah. And he's got the next page is for 215. Okay. Okay, the next one is the certificate of compliance of 170 259 303 Russell Street, which is the um Harbor Freight. Harbor, yeah, I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> Thank you. It. Thank <laughs> you. Harbor Freight site. Yeah. Gary Roberts developed. Yeah. Uh Kayla said that everything looks pretty good on that, except for you want to add something. Um just in the letter I mentioned the the pavement. Top coat in the yeah. back. Yeah, that was never completed, but what I would suspect is as part of, if you want to, the order of conditions for the 315 site. We can we can approve that because it's no further disturbance. Not it's pre-existing. They're just going to surface code it. Correct. That's it. The other, finish it the other the other has to do with the uh, order conditions. Did that say, Kayla? Oh, yeah. Um, let me find it. You need... Is it in there? What's the application? Put it down somewhere. You had, oh. the, you had the order of conditions for it. Yeah, so, okay. Oh, that was for 203. Okay, I think we need to make another motion to include the ongoing conditions mentioned in the um, order, the original order of conditions for... Steve Lewis? Yeah, Steve Lewis. Okay. Um, which seems... Uh, okay. It would be no salt, no use of salt in the parking lot, considering the sensitivity of the area as part of the public water supply aquifer. Um, and then following the most updated snow storage plan, which I guess will change once the new. So can, can we just can we just incorporate that into the new order of conditions period? Yeah, but I think in the meantime, just to have it in the certificate of compliance. Okay. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we could just, why don't you rattle them off then? Okay, I think it's just those two. For 203, it's just the no salt in the parking lot and then the following the most recent snow storage plan. 
Um, so those are the ones we just approved. Okay, so those will be added to the certificate of compliance of special conditions. You fine with that, Tom? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So should we have a motion to amend? I have a motion to amend uh, as 17203 certificate of compliance to include the to amend form of compliance for 170-203, as Kayla just suggested, those two items. Yep, I'll make that motion. motion, Steve. Yep. Second, all set. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Unanimous. Okay. Okay. It was the next one that we had more problems. With. Yes. Okay. So the in the order of conditions for 170-259, there are a few conditions that it says um, shall survive expiration of the order and be included as a continuing condition on the COC. Um, I'll start from the beginning. The restored and replicated wetland area will be continued to be monitored at least annually after installation um, for invasive plant control to prevent the rest restored areas from being overrun by invasive species. Um, the next one, no further alteration of the restoration and mitigation areas is allowed except as required to maintain the area in its restored or mitigated condition. The next one, um, no snow storage in the wetlands or 35 foot buffer zone. Um, next one, salt shall be used minimally, but as needed for public safety on the parking lots and drivers in the winter. And last one, dumping prohibited, there shall be no dumping of leaves, grass clippings, brush, or other debris into the wetlands or 35 foot buffer zone. So we're just going to add those as special conditions to continue with the certificate of compliance for 170 259 at 303 Russell Street. Do we have a motion to accept this? I'll make that motion as well. Steve? Last second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's all three. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, uh, so that, if you just turn the page, that's the... Yeah, I'll take this. This is just important so they can continue with the other projects. Well, good seeing you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Who do we have in the audience? We have Kayla on Zoom. Uh, well, people for Hoffman are not here, so let's go to Lake Warner. Okay. <clears throat> Request for the determination of applicability Lake Warner. Friends of Lake Warner seek the handful invasive water chestnut from Lake Warner. And who's here for that? Hey there, this is Brian Pearson. I'm here for Friends of Lake Warner. Okay, you're on. Okay, so uh, this is a renewal of a permit that we already had uh, for three years, and we'd like to continue pulling the water chestnuts uh, out of Lake Warner and would, are seeking another three-year permit. Okay, so it's pretty pretty cut and dry. I don't need, think we need to have a whole lot of discussion on this one, do we? How's, how's it going pulling those? Are they come back as soon as you pull them up, or they just keep it's a it's a never ending battle. You know, we just had a, a vegetation study done, uh, funded by CPA, and uh, they divided the lake into eighty six quadrants, and we have water chestnuts in eighty five of the eighty six quadrants. So we got a long way to go. Um, <clears throat> the great thing is uh, we're partnering with the Connecticut River Conservancy, and they are bringing on an army of volunteers, hopefully, and doing all the scheduling and registration for us. So it eases our workload in terms of managing volunteers, which is great. And hopefully we make some progress this summer. So basically, this is, we consider this another hearing. We're just doing a renewal. How do we? We can't renew the RDA, so they have to just, they submit another one. And so this is a basically request for determination of applicability. It's a carbon copy of the one submitted three years ago. Yes. And we're going to basically, uh, it's going to be a negative two determination. The work described in the request is within an area subject to protection. Uh, the act will not remove fill dredge or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the following of, of a notice of intent. And then we have also a sheet of special conditions. Um, determination is issued under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the local Hadley Wetlands Bylaw. It approves the efforts of the Friends of Lake Warner and the Mill River and their associates to control and eliminate water chestnut plants from the lake. This work is subject to the following special conditions. Findings. The volunteer effort to control water chestnut in Lake Warner does involve work in a resource area 
but the hand pulling method will not be detrimental to the wetland and is in fact beneficial by removing the highly invasive plant so native plants may thrive instead. Applicant must follow these special conditions. A, volunteers must receive training in water safety and water chestnut plant identification before starting work on the site. B, the water chestnut plant material must be disposed of at least 100 feet from the edge of the water or wetland. The disposal area should be checked periodically to make sure no viable material escapes and re-inoculates the lake. C, if part of the activity includes work on private property, applicant must have written permission from the landowner for access onto or across the property. D, the friends group shall report once a year the results of their water chestnut pulling efforts to the Conservation Commission. Given that, um, you also have a number, number six under the determination. The area and or work described in the request is not subject to review and approval by the Hadley. No further review required. So I would look for a motion to basically close the hearing and accept these conditions. Do it in one sweep. No, make a motion. We do that. Steve makes a motion. I'll second. Brandon seconds. We basically close the hearing. I'm going to do it all at one sweep. If I need the negative, the special conditions. Where are you guys uh, putting them after you you plucked them? We've been transporting them over to the peninsula that the Friends of Lake Warner owns on Stockbridge Road. So it's okay. yeah, a good, a good, uh, way, more than a hundred feet for sure. Okay, just a couple of years ago, I was out there and I did see a couple of piles of them. I just wasn't sure if that was an appropriate place that is acceptable for dumping there. Okay. So, so on the side of the road going in there at the end. Right at the pumping station, go down that access right. road. Go That's where you're dumping them? Yeah. So we had a motion, we had a second. Any further discussion other than that? Anybody else? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All three unanimous, Steve, Brandon, and Gary. So here's the past one, Kayla. And Brian, I'll send that over to you. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Oh, Bye. -bye. Yeah. Okay, so we have requested determination of applicability 89 Hockenham Road. Ray Young seeks to construct a shed within the 200 foot riverfront area. Is that applicant here? I so. so, oh, I'll look. Let's, let's, can we just do, yeah, we could circle back. Okay. They show up and could. Okay. And let's just do everything else. First. So you folks have come in for something? We wanted to, so we're in the early stages of the planning. We, so we wanted to ask some questions during the public comment section. If that's okay. We can take you right now, please. Okay. So Mark and I, um, Mark and Patty Solomon, we live on Porsche French, French Street, not too far from good old Lake Warner. And um, our whole property is in with, within 100 feet of that river that goes behind us. Um, it's quite a slope along there, and um, we are concerned about we're concerned about erosion partly, but we also would like to have some space in our backyard that we could like use yeah. without it being totally slow. So what we'd like to do is to um, put up a retaining wall um, about so if you go from the back of our house to the cliff, it is a cliff. <laughs> um, that's about 50 feet. So about halfway down, we want to put up a retaining wall and have a small patio area. We've been talking to Rob Adair and he gave us an estimate. Um, he also worked on the house on the other side of the creek. So he's familiar with the area. So he's basically a builder contractor. Yep. But you're still going to have to go through a notice of intent permitting process. Yep, we understand that. And you're so, going to have to hire um, environmental specialist to permit this. So, I, I've met with Kayla, um, and just what she said was a homeowner doesn't necessarily need to have an environmental engineer. You're in the 100 foot riverfront zone. So, this this was originally you filed a request for determination, sent it to DDP. Mark Simpson said, file a notice of intent. He said, your options are hire an environmental engineer or work with the commission, and it'll take longer if you want to do it on your own because you'll have to get all the information. like alteration or replication areas. Right. Um, There's a lot of steps that have yeah. to be taken because you're in the 100 foot zone. Yes. You can't do it outside. You can't do it in 100 or 200 foot zone. So we're not experts in that. We can't 
tell you how to unfortunately do that. Permit. Okay. You have to hire someone. So we don't have a choice. We have to hire an environmental engineer, yes. which I understand will cost thousands of dollars yes. before we can put even a small patio on our backyard. Because you're in a hundred foot zone. I think that well, you you have a somebody who's going to design the whole like retaining wall. Yep, Rob Derrick is going to design it. Yeah. Okay. He's not environmental. Right. He's in our landscape. I mean, there are people who have done it on their own. It just takes longer. And you know, I don't know what. Well, up to you. They got to dot all the eyes and cross all the T's to keep make Mark Simpson happy down in Springfield. That's a problem. We do the work on behalf of the Springfield DEP regional office, and they can appeal all our work. Right. And you're working in a very, very, very sensitive area, and also a very, very visible area. It's a tough, it's a tough spot. Well, what we're doing is we're trying to prevent further erosion of that hill. Hmm. But we can't permit that without being properly engineered yeah. and designed. We're not engineers; we're designers. No, I didn't so, so we only are. we only can look at the application that's been prepared by somebody professionally that will address all the environmental issues. That the DEP, the DEP once we file a notice of intent, they're going to come back with a whole list of stuff that you have to do and standards you're going to have to meet in order to do this right. re creation you want to do. So basically, our only choice is to hire an environmental. <laughs> We can't the boys give recommendations. Do yeah. boys want to do that? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Should, should boys want to do an environmental? They, they had someone, yeah, they had the engineering involved with that. Yeah. But we've seen people doing things in our neighborhood. I don't know if they brought in an environmental engineer. We are not the first ones who've had the idea to bring in Phil and to make our yard more level. That's happened on French Street. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, this was done years ago and done illegally, but now things are a lot more difficult. No, not that many years ago. But I'm just saying I, that's. It was maybe three years ago. And so other board members have any other thoughts to say? I, I I know who did the work at Joel Boisbert's house, and I know they went through all the proper channels for that. Yeah. They, they wanted nothing to do with it unless that was all addressed, just because well, that's a huge liability on the contractor as well. So for Rob's sake, I'm sure Rob would want to make sure that. Yeah. You know, all those bases are covered before he does any work there as well. Yeah, he so said, what I'm saying is, you, and I, this is just from what I've heard from around, is that you can do stone, but you can't do concrete. You can't do like concrete puddings or. You see, you, you're altering, filling, dredging within 100 feet of the river, the River Protection Act. And you got to. You just can't do what you. You got to go through the process. We can't tell you how to permit. I'm just telling you who you have to go to to get right. the design. So we do. We have the rules, but we can't tell you how to do it. That's not our position as a board. In terms of this, we're not. I don't think there's any materials difference in the Land Protection Act that different between stone and concrete or whatever. No, like whatever. It's just fill. It's there's no difference between the materials. It's just how to put it. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, we're not going to get our patty because we won't be able to afford it. What if they just went to DEP and then you know, what DEP? DEP is going to tell them they have to hire somebody. They don't. No, DEP didn't say that. DEP said you could hire somebody and have it go faster, or you could do it on your own. And you know you'll have to really work hard at it. It might take a while, but like you could go yeah. down that avenue. Well, that's, that's my. I get mis I said it's my suggestion. Yeah. Do as you yeah. wish. You can submit what all you do, all the forms. We're going to just submit it to Springfield and, and work on their behalf. That's all we can do. Could you tell us who we need to talk to in Springfield? Mark Stinson. You wouldn't know this. I think you might, you may have emailed him already when you submitted the RDA. It's whatever that email was. Okay. We wrote at Got it. the underscore no. And he's from the, what? He's from the DP, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should talk with him and ask for his advice on what, whether we can do this with that or not. Because they're the ultimate ones that are going to approve or disapprove whatever we do. And he, they will review whatever you submit to them.
and we have to make sure that we have everything in place that they're looking for for paperwork and replication, in other words, mitigation, all those different features that happen in the river front. Okay. Thank you. One, one other question. Is it all either within 100 feet or not within 100 feet, or are there different? The, the River Protection Act is written as such. Nothing can be done within 100 feet, period. You can work in a 100 to 200 foot zone if you can't work outside a 200 foot zone. But generally, the, the zero to 100 foot zone is like a really difficult zone to work in. You know, you could be pre existing, but um, like I said, he knows the ins and outs of the bill. But he honors. Street has a fence across the back of their yard for safety reasons, and we want to do that. Mm -hmm. And does that also have that would go into the that would be part of your permit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're expecting a grandchild. Okay, so <laughs> we don't want her to go over the side. No, 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 no I, I've okay. been down that bank. And other people <laughs> like, like all of French Street, where the thing will like, well, half of you know, like four houses, and it's like half of them have fences, you know, yep. because it's dangerous. Yep, I agree. Okay. So we should just put that in the whole thing. Yep. Put that in as part of Everything you want to do, put it in that application. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And you are touring field the shed on 89 Hawk. Okay. <laughs> so I want to step into that the request for determination of applicability. Um Oh, yes, that's for minutes. I'm sorry. Request with the Senate specifically 89 Hockenham Road. Ray Young seeks to construct a shed within the 200 foot riverfront area. So, what's the history of this? I was told by the building inspector that was previously used as a tiny house. It was. Okay. It was, it was built to be a tiny house or like a some sort of office or something that could be used. It was built off site, moved to the a few years ago, uh, we understand nothing can happen there. Nothing, no one can be there. But we're trying to move it off site. And the one possibility that he mentioned was it being just permitted as a storage shed to allow it to be there and store stuff. Unfortunately, I'm going to cut you short. Okay. We have a, a town bylaw. Nothing is allowed within 35 feet. Or wetlands, no variances are allowed. You're within 35 feet. Okay. So I it, 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 I it, there's no exceptions. It's a town bylaw, and they will not give variances on that. We can't give variances on. It. We're not allowed to. That that would have to go to the ZBA. I don't think it's ZBA though. They only do zoning. I don't. I don't think they would even get it from the ZBA. It's not allowed within 35 feet. It will have to be removed immediately. I thought there was that you had read me. There, there's like in the bylaws says you have to prove that it would be like a hardship or something. Or I thought it said yeah, that was supposed to be moved for a couple of years. I've been told by the building inspector, and it has not. That was a confusing situation where they, where he originally got in touch with me, and it would I have the emails to prove, and I emailed him back. Mm -hmm. He originally got in touch and said that it either needed to be permitted or shed or moved. I got. I sent them an email. Well, the bottom line is we cannot permit it within thirty-five feet. Period. But just to say, I did. I did okay. email him back, but, and I never heard back okay. from him for years. But we can't give you a permit for it. Okay. Sorry. I, I don't. I'm. I'm not. I'm not trying to be. Like, no. No. Or anything. But there. I. There was. Was there that if you can prove that it's not harm causing harm. I thought I thought I remember you said. Yeah, nope. Let me read the. I could read the bylaw. No structures alteration of work is allowed within thirty five foot buffer zone of a wetlands. Period. Okay, let me read the bylaw. No one shall fill or write or otherwise alter any land within thirty five feet of a wetland or a stream as defined in MGL Chapter thirty one thirty one Section forty Wetlands Protection Act and the regulations at three ten CMR Section ten point zero except for the normal maintenance or improvement of the land in agricultural or agriculture used. This bylaw shall be enforced by the Conservation Commission, which may grant waivers at its sole discretion for access to land or where it finds that the waiver is necessary and that it will not harm the resources protected by this bylaw or take any action thereto. I guess I was under the impression that it was up to you if there was if it was not causing any harm to the wetland, which there's no construction going on. There's not no movement around there at all. The only thing that's 
we're trying to do is have it be there as a storage shed temporarily before we can move it out so that well, so it's for so so the straw poll, the board members. It doesn't have a permit to be there to be in the with, first correct? place. That's, that's it, it's not supposed is there a permit to put that there? Well there no. he my understanding was the only permit I could get was a shed permit through you all. Yeah. Okay. Well right now it doesn't have a permit right now to be there. No, I right. So and they try and get a permit by doing this tonight. No the determination of applicability. And partially what we're trying to do, the problem is that the trailer, I mean, if, if it was if it was able to be moved, I would move it tomorrow. Absolutely. I would have moved it a long time ago. But the trailer has a broken leaf spring. It's a trailer that was custom built, apparently. And I'm, I've been like following everyone, talking to everyone, trying to figure out someone who can fix the spring. Mm -hmm. We have no desire to keep it there. We're trying to move it. And the only thing we're trying to do is get a shed permit so that it can be there while we get it fixed to move it out of there. We're not trying to like push any kind of limits around tiny houses or be in there or use it in any sort of way. Do you have a timeline for when you think it will be fixed? I think it can be fixed in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. I think you can have it out of there by the end of the summer. I am not going to uh, <coughs> vote for a permit for this. No, not a permit, but if we can get her word that she's going to take it out in two months, I say we'll give you two months. That's my opinion. What's going to happen? Then, what if it's then not you got to take it off. Then it's got to go. I mean, it's just not permitted, and it's too close. And you say you want to get rid of it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, we're trying to move it out of there, and it's just been, I, I mean, I can't prove it, but I, I tell you, I've talked to so many different people trying to find, like, all of the different spring people, all of the different trailer folks. I am in conversation right now with Amherst Welding, and they think they might be able to figure out something to get it just to a place where it's movable. Yep. I would just continue pursuing that and get it out of there. We're not, we're not going to give a permit to allow it there. I'm not going to vote for it. We have three people here right now. We need three people. We need three yeses, and I'm not going to go yes at all. The only place where I'm at now is that it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place, and now it's there, and it's an issue. It's if, been it there for stays, a couple of years. if it stays there and maintains itself being an issue, then you know what are we discussing at this point? You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think it should be there. I don't. I understand if something's broken, you don't want to move it and further damage it or whatnot. I understand that. But it's got to get out of there one way or another. So I understand that I, I do, and I am trying to move it out of there. And I guess I'm just trying to buy a little time to get it fixed to move it out of there. They've told me that I, it literally won't, you know, it'll break on the road and then it'll just be on the side of the road broken at that point with a huge problem. So it's well, probably going to be cut apart into pieces and taken out. It's a problem now, though, too. That's what we got to yeah. address, you know. No, I understand. I understand it needs to get out of there. I'm trying to buy time to to get it fixed and be able to tow it out of there properly. You can't get a flatbed down there to have a windshield right on a flatbed? I, I talked to, um, no, because the, when they put it on the flatbed, it's apparently over height. I talked to um, Perils, is trucking in Northampton, yep. the other folks that I've been working with. Other options, just deconstruction of the shed. Fair to part. Yeah, I mean, it's got to get out of there one way or another. How it gets out of there, that doesn't matter to us, but it has to leave. So do we have to? Do we have to act on this determination? Um, I guess it depends. Like, I mean, is that because if you want to move it, would it be? I think it's are just you moving it off the property? Because then, see if she's got any pictures okay. Of yeah. Um, do you have any pictures of the on you? Um, any chance? Is it a trailer or a camper? It's a trailer. It's 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 built on top of a trailer. Okay. Um. Gosh, I'm sure I have pictures somewhere. I have a drawing. Um, two axes. The other option we have, you can continue this the next month. You guys can go look at it and go ahead and we have a more of a board. Or I mean, it doesn't. She wants to go on anyway, so. It's, I don't want to do a permit for it to stay there. I want it gone. No, um, I agree with that. 
Month is going to turn into two. Two is going to turn into six. Six is going to. That's no. why I said if we have a set day, because you're not going to do it tomorrow. It's not going to happen during the end of the week. So there's got to be a day when it's got to go. I don't even want to go there. I'll abstain. Well, I feel like we would have to set some form of deadline tonight anyways, because like you said, it's not like she's going to leave here right now and go do it. Right. So yeah. we've got to. So, I mean. Not what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a motion that we continue to next month. In the meantime, that's going to give you one month to try moving it. We could continue it again for another month. I'm going to just move it down. We know we have five board members. We only have three here tonight, right. and we need a, 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 all three to vote yes. You need three out of five. We need three yes vote. Three yes vote. Gotcha. We need three people to vote for a quorum, gotcha. and I'm already no. Gotcha. So it ain't going to happen. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm going to look for a motion to continue this hearing to June 11th, Tuesday. It will be after the, the beliefs. So maybe we could do it beforehand, but it's 630 on Tuesday, the 11th. Meantime, you've got a month to go to work. Okay, I'd rather try to continue this and give you, if we have to, another continuance for another month. I don't think anybody here wants it there. No. I don't think a permit's going to be in the And cards. then we can just, once it's gone, we'll just negate the, 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 the application altogether, which shouldn't cost you much anyways. Okay. Just a fee. Okay. But this way, you've already advertised. We don't have to re-advertise again. Okay. We're going to kick the can down the road one month for you. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Jeff Weeks is very talented at Amherst Welding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know the man very well. Okay. So we can get it out. The other option is you may have to deconstruct the shed and take it out in pieces. Yeah. But... Okay. Yeah. So look. Motion. All three of us agreed. So you got another month. Thank you. Appreciate okay. That. And like I said, we can always entertain, but at some point we're not going to yeah, keep not, going. Not gonna keep kicking it down the road. Right. You got to really get it out of the yeah. place. Okay. I'm working. Um, we'll, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Have a good night. We'll do as well. Um, it's the best way to handle it. Oh. No, it is. We'll give them too much knowledge. Yep. Okay. Instead of setting a deadline. No. Because if you set a dead so the deadline, I yeah, will talk about one. it yeah. um, a little time. Well, okay, so next on the agenda, I just. Okay. A few updates. So I. Oh, hello. Um, I had spoken to Tina Smith with the APR program, and she had mentioned that she was working on organizing a drainage ditch kind of info session um, and wanted to know if we would want to like host it at, at the senior center and be involved. Um, she's envisioning having speakers from DEP, APR program, NRCS, CISA, us, um, maybe DPW um, to talk about wetlands exemptions, um, how the wetland protection act applies to drainage ditch maintenance, town's responsibility, how to go through the APR approval process, other sorts of programs that could be helpful. Um, and have like a farmer Q&A at the end. Um, she also mentioned that there may be a partnership with UMass and the to map drainage ditch, the drainage ditch networks in the valley. So that may be also a topic of discussion. And she was wondering um, if you guys wanted to give feedback on timing of the event, um, when you think would be a good time for people who are interested in this sort of event. Um, it would probably just be in person and maybe we would have a virtual option like these meetings and no, it wouldn't be during the day it'd be like after I mean, work or she's flexible she asked like what you think people would be more likely to attend well it's planting season right now and it's going to be harvest season in three months so somewhere in between that i would say would be best especially if you do want to get some farmers involved mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of people in town that have questions about yeah what they can I'd do like and what they can't do maybe we need better answers too um so i would say the next month two Thank month you. range yeah yeah and do you but, think like evenings or late afternoons would be best? I think probably something along these lines. Yeah, around this time. You can't be anything before six. Yeah, no, we're all still working it. exactly. Yeah. And it can't be any. I mean, it's going to be within a reasonable time, right? So we aren't. And it can't be a four-hour presentation yeah. either. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Short, sweet. Okay, six thirty. This is a good idea to have this six or six thirty. Yeah, six. Yeah, we can even kind of really tie good. it onto a meeting. If you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's too much, but that might be a lot. Okay. Sure. 
Okay, so cool. I'll be in contact with her. I'll talk to Scott from DPW um, and people at the Senior Center to talk about booking the space. Okay, I did talk with uh, Loop Long Street from Hatfield mm -hmm. Conservation Commission, and basically what they did with their ditch program is they put a bundle of information together, what they thought would be a good idea, whatever. They sent it to DEP, and DEP immediately turned around and said really? no. Yeah. So they said at that point they'd want to see like an actual ditch commission, like or committee separate you of the concept. Yeah. So I think they're gonna try something else at this point. Do so do you commission. have the document? No, no, I have so it'd, it'd, it'd be good to see if they go through the process for us and then we can Yeah, so it just it just I think that was uh I think they came up with a plan that so we have to reinvent the wheel. It was totally yeah, no, I also I'd like to see what DP responded. Just yeah, I I can ask him again. Or if um, you just give me his email, I could contact sure. him. Sure. But yeah, he said it basically that we're like, no, we're we're not even gonna deal with this in anymore. In your free time so. in the office, you can contact him. And yeah. <laughs> get the ins and outs of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. What's next? Smart growth. Um. Yeah. So the planning board. Um. They have a steering committee for. They have a grant from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to study creating like a smart growth district, which is like densifying areas that already are developed. So they have two areas on Route Nine that they're looking at creating a smart growth district. Um, and this committee is looking for a representative from the Conservation Commission. Its okay. meetings are once a month or once or twice a month at 5 p.m. on Mondays. So any any takers? Uh, Gordon Smith. Yeah, I, I, I make a motion with you nominate Gordon Smith. Um, that was back in the last time we watched I mean, this building. Also, yeah. I don't think they have to attend all the meetings. I think they just want somebody to give feedback on wetlands protection he, and what would be required. He's a smart, a smart guy. I think he'd be good on a smart group. <laughs> What are they trying to do again? I, yeah, yeah so, so they're studying creating a smart growth district um, along Route Nine. It's in the paper. Which is like, I mean, I can't really, I can't really explain <laughs> as well as the person from PVPC, but it's like allowing for more types of housing and development. Basically, similar to what they try to areas, do with the Econo Lodge. Oh, they want to develop. It's not just housing. It's also like transportation and other stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, it's, yeah. That's a no for me. That's a no from me. So we're we're out yeah. We can, we, we can, I, mean, bring, I, mean, I think they just, even if you go to like one or two meetings, we can, we can bring it up at the next meeting with Gordon and, okay, and Ray is here. Do it. But I think right now the three of us and I just want to do it. Right? I mean, we'll, if they need we'll, someone there, I could do for a couple of meetings is like I go to one and then somebody else will go to one. So I don't have to go to every single one of them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. Yeah. And I don't think that you need to go to every meeting. I can ask about. I think if there's more information about what they're seeking yeah, to do, just, too, then I can, you know, if that actually might be something I'm interested in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Sitting in a it's very vague on what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Like what they're doing or what their plan is and yeah. so okay. on and so let forth. Me, let me reference my notes. Okay. And it was the first one was reported, so it's on our YouTube Yeah, you could, you could watch the first Okay. Yeah. Um, Kyle Knopf well. from the PVPC had a whole presentation on what smart growth is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they have also if people from planning board. Housing and Economic Development. There's an at-large member. Um, Randy Eisner's on it from Select Board, and then an at-large member. That's kind of the, the makeup of the committee, and they want somebody from conservation to talk about wetlands and how you know what regulations apply and like any sort of any sorts of like things, conflicts that could ha emerge. Um, right. And yeah, there's it's there's two areas that they're studying specifically on Route Nine, on um, North and South. Um, yeah, it's it would be like a zoning district. Okay. I think maybe like an overlay um, district that allows for more flexible housing options, transportation options, and just in general like development. What, so what don't we be like building denser, not out? Why don't we kick? Why don't we kick? Kick it to the next meeting where we have Ray and Gordon here in case they might have an interest. Ray doesn't have an interest, <laughs> and I'm so doubtful that Gordon will have an interest. So the next meeting okay. is sounds like brands of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> The next meeting is on Monday. See if it's something that you would be interested in. This upcoming Monday? Yeah, Monday at 5, uh, 5 p.m. And they meet, I think, here, but they also have a Zoom. On Zoom last time. Yeah. Well, folks, you were kind of off here. The camera does keep turning off. Does it has to been? A few times, I keep turning it back on. That's fine by me. I didn't see this on the paper. There's nobody watching us. There are people who watch it. Yeah. There are people who watch it. 
<laughs> they gotta go away. Okay, so <laughs> my lovely, I'll see Brandon at the meeting. You're gonna be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you know if I can make it or not. But I should. I'll, I should be, I'll, I'll go to the first one. I'll go to. So. Right, they, they already had the first one, so it will be the second one. But they're still in the early stages, so nothing's really happened yet. So they're this still, Monday like, at five. What's with this aggressive behavior? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> we need so the next class <laughs> is that I, I got some feedback from Scott on the the table, table policy, but I, oh, sorry, no, what? we're shaking the table a little bit, oh. so I was killing it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Scott McCarthy gave me some feedback on the tree removal policy. I haven't been able to make the edits yet, so I'll bring that for next week. Okay, and then minutes, um, what's that? I make a motion to accept the minutes from uh, I have April ninth. I got them right here. I got them. Anybody else? Want to do I'll yeah, take one, please. Here you go. You can have two. Look at that. that. Yeah. Do you have a motion now? I made a motion to accept the April ninth minutes. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor, aye. No. Aye. Thank you all, please. Brandon, Steve, and Gary for deals. Bills? I don't have any bills. Oh, just the, uh, no, I don't have any bills. Just okay. the tree, but we don't have to so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So oh, man. You need a motion to adjourn? Steve? I'll second it. Second Brandon. Brandon. I don't think we have any further discussion. And here's all the signature forms. Yeah, we're all there.